I'm Tracy McKay, 38 years old. Currently, my husband is on a work assignment alone and I am living by doing housekeeping jobs. I have a 16-year-old son who attends a boarding high school in another state, so I am living alone now. When my husband's transfer was decided, I wanted to go with him, but he disliked the idea of leaving his family home and our house empty. My housekeeping service job mainly involves visiting regular clients' homes, and it's hard to take long breaks or quit because the elderly clients prefer familiar people, so I decided to stay alone, suppressing my desire to go with him. I originally worked as an office worker at the company where he currently works for, and we married after meeting there. He is a cheerful mood maker at work, popular among both men and women. He always organized drinking parties and company trips, making them fun events. I helped him with every event, trying to be his support. Tracy, sorry I'm late. I'll buy you dinner when I get to the end of this preparation. Really? That's great. I'll work hard on the rest. Think about what you want to eat while you work. Okay. This was the day I first went to dinner alone with Scott. He invited me to dinner because it was getting late. Until that day, we hadn't talked about personal things, but we talked a lot while dining. I learned a lot about Scott that I didn't know before, and we had a lot in common, which made our conversation lively. As a result, we found out we had many common interests, and after that day, we gradually started inviting each other to drinks. Since we both liked alcohol, it was perfect for after work, and we often went out spontaneously. We were getting used to going out together. The first time he invited me on a holiday, we went to an amusement park, and I was conscious it was a date. From our conversation about liking thrill rise, the topic led to this. Scott, this is definitely a date, isn't it? <laughs> I asked loudly, just as the roller coaster was slowly reaching its highest point. Scott started to say something, but just then the roller coaster plunged down. After coming down, he said with a big smile, I always consider it a date. Saying that, Scott took my hand and held it tightly. I couldn't believe I was now dining, drinking, and walking in the amusement park holding hands with the admired Scott. We enjoyed many rides that day and fully enjoyed the amusement park. From that day on, Scott and I became closer, but... There was no talk of officially dating. It was too obvious to ask, but given how often we saw each other and what we did, I assumed that we must be in a relationship. Then one day while at work, a woman called the company phone. She only said, please connect me to Scott. Excuse me, may I have your name? It was a routine question for company phone calls, but I asked nervously, I'm Scott's wife. I was speechless for a few seconds. Regaining my composure, I hastily said, Please hold, and put her on hold. Scott, you have a call on line three. After passing the message, I rushed to the restroom. There was a reason he didn't talk about our relationships or such matters. I had never heard that Scott was married since joining the company. I had assumed he was single. Unable to concentrate on work, I left early that day. But that night, Scott McKay came to my house with a cake. Sorry about today. It must have been a shock, huh? I had no idea you were married. Of course I was surprised. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't talk about it properly. You shouldn't be here. Go back home. Actually, we're already in the process of getting divorced, so I'm free now. And the call today was just about the divorce procedures. You don't need to make such excuses. It's not an excuse. I love you, Tracy. Once the divorce is finalized, I want to marry you as soon as possible. Then, until everything is official, let's not see each other anymore. If that's what you say, I understand. Scott then left. Talking with him didn't clear the confusion in my heart. I wondered if he had children, what kind of person his wife was, what caused the divorce, all these unnecessary thoughts. What should I look forward to from tomorrow? I was troubled for several days, but ultimately because I enjoyed the time spent with Scott, I had no choice but to wait. Then one day during lunch break, I got into an elevator. Scott rushed in too. It was just the two of us in the elevator. The divorce is finalized. 
Sorry for making you wait, Tracy. Really? You actually got divorced? I told you I would. I thought in such situations, people just say that but never actually divorce. I've been worried all this time. It's alright now. If you're okay with a divorced guy like me, please, go out with me. Yes. It took a long time before we officially started dating. But from there, everything progressed quickly. Rumors of us dating spread in the office. We got married, had a child, and my life moved forward smoothly. Almost frighteningly so. When our marriage was decided, I quit my job. Scott didn't have children with his ex-wife, and I heard that might have been a reason for their divorce, but I never asked in detail. After getting married and enjoying a newlywed life, I gave birth to our first son and became a mother. From that day, I had two people to pour my love into. Scott, too, cherished me and our son. And after a long period of dedication to raising our son, I began working part-time for a housekeeping service when my son entered junior high school. He was set to attend a boarding high school for sports, so I thought it better to slowly adapt to the workforce rather than rush to find a job then. Scott, of course, agreed. Then, at the time of our son's high school enrollment, Scott's transfer was decided. Feeling lonely all of a sudden, I immersed myself in work. Taking care of the meals, cleaning, and laundry for the elderly living alone became a fulfilling job for me. Visiting almost the same homes every day, they felt like my own family. Months of such life passed, and I had grown accustomed to living alone. On this rare day off, I thought about thoroughly cleaning my house while eating breakfast when the TV got noisy. Looking at it, the location was where Scott's company after his transfer was. The news was continuously reporting on a tsunami. In the footage, Scott's company was directly hit by a massive tsunami. Regaining my senses, I hastily grabbed my smartphone and called Scott. Yes? Scott, where are you? At the office. Where else? Don't call during work. The call ended abruptly. I could only feel uncomfortable on the phone with him. Was it just by chance he wasn't at the office? Hasn't he seen the news? There was no indication that he knew about the tsunami. However, it was strange for him to speak in that tone. Feeling uneasy, I decided to call the head office of the company where Scott McKay worked. My name is Tracy McKay. Could I speak to my husband, please? Miss McKay, we always appreciate your support. Unfortunately, Mr. McKay is off today. Ah, of course. Sorry about that. Is Victor available then? Please hold on a moment. This Victor was a colleague who joined the company in the same year as me. I had made plans to meet him that day. I had an idea of what might be going on from the call with the office worker, but I needed confirmation. Hi, Victor. Long time no see. Sorry for calling you out of the blue. What's up? You haven't changed at all, Tracy. Look at me, already hitting middle age spread. <laughs> I wanted to ask you something. Where is Scott working now? Huh? Scott has been working with us continuously. Why do you ask? I knew it. What's wrong? He told me he was transferred, and we haven't been living together since April. What? What happened? Did you two have a fight? It must be another woman. Just like when he was with me. But surely he wouldn't lie about something like that. He probably thought that if he was transferred, he could be with her every day. Let me look into it. Act like you don't know anything, Tracy. This morning, I saw the news about the tsunami and called him in a panic. He said he was at work. It seems strange if he was supposed to be at his transfer location. I see. I'll let you know as soon as I find out anything. Thank you, Victor. While waiting for Victor's call, I thought about many things alone. Divorce at this age, I felt helpless, but if Scott really was cheating, I couldn't stay with him. Then three days later, Victor contacted me. That day, I met with Victor and everything became clear. Victor had pretended to seek advice about a rumor of his own affair to catch Scott off guard, and instead he brought back information about Scott. Scott was living with a young woman. Apparently, she even brought him homemade lunches every day. I couldn't forgive him for lying about being transferred to do such a thing. 
While thinking about what to do with these feelings, I went to prepare dinner at the house I was in charge of with my housekeeping service. The homeowner, Grandpa Dan, lived alone without family, but he was always bright and a very nice person. Grandpa Dan, I'll make mixed rice and simmered fish for dinner today. Thank you, Tracy. But is something wrong? Eh? No, I'm fine. Nothing is wrong. You don't have to make anything fancy. Just talk to me. Well, I'm thinking about getting a divorce. You must be going through something tough. Yes, I told you my husband was transferred, but it seems that was all a lie. He's been going to the company as usual, but he's living with a young girl. Your husband has really done something flashy. He still doesn't realize that I know the truth, but honestly, I can't decide what to do. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Of course. I don't want to be with him anymore. Then you should clear out his belongings from the house. But if I do that, my son and I won't be able to live. You know, Tracy, ever since you started coming here, my days have become truly enjoyable. Grandpa Dan was speaking in a gentler tone than usual, trying to soothe my anger and sadness. Now it's my turn to repay the favor. What do you mean? I used to be a president of a big company when I was healthier. I've never heard you mention that before. Indeed, his house is huge, and I had initially thought him to be a well-off elderly man. But as we became closer, such things stopped mattering. But once those titles are gone, people who used to be around me disappeared. And now I'm all alone. My wife passed away before me, and we never had children. It's lonely, I tell you. <sighs> I'd like to say, get a divorce and become my wife. What? Just in name, of course. <laughs> if you were my wife, I could leave all my wealth to you. What? That's such a bizarre idea. <laughs> I was truly shocked by Grandpa Dan's statement at that moment. I wasn't sure if it was a joke or not, but I definitely felt like I had gained a powerful ally, and it made me feel stronger. That would be too much, even tarnishing your family register. But first, let's get you a house. We'll start the discussion from there. Move all your and your son's belongings there. At first, I didn't understand what Grandpa Dan was talking about. Given his age, I even wondered if he might be suffering from dementia. However, Grandpa Dan soon gifted me and my son a brand new house. He said he wanted to base the company on the work I was doing, to spend more time with the elderly during their final days. He proposed starting a company with me as the representative, saying, From now on, you build and continue it. He would lay the foundation for the company. Considering my current situation and my son, I decided to accept Grandpa Dan's generosity. There was no longer any hesitation. I decided to let go of my feelings for my husband and move forward. On my next day off, I visited my son. I wanted to explain everything to him and make sure he understood the current situation. I had always thought of him as a child, but he had grown up admirably. He listened to me till the end and encouraged me to stay strong. He said he would visit during his long breaks and wanted to thank Grandpa Dan. I completed the move by myself, leaving only Scott's belongings in the old house. The house was just a vast, empty space without our things. I left the divorce papers and wedding ring at the entrance and walked away. Unsurprisingly, Scott hadn't contacted me throughout this entire time. I was still visiting Grandpa Dan's house, but I continued my previous job. Before starting the company, I discussed with Grandpa Dan about getting certified as a care worker, aiming to start a service specifically for the elderly. Grandpa Dan was delighted with my idea and offered to cover the cost of school and living expenses, urging me to get the qualification as soon as possible. There was no point in hesitating any longer. I fully accepted Grandpa Dan's support. About half a year later, I received my first call from Scott. I couldn't answer as I was in class and didn't call back even after class ended. I intended to let Scott find out the situation at home with his own eyes. Although I had quit my job, I continued going to school and never missed a day taking care of Grandpa Dan. We ate dinner together whenever possible, and I stayed with him until he fell asleep. We were almost like family. Tracy, once your divorce is finalized, would you consider becoming my adopted child? You're saying such things again? I'm in the final stage of my life. <laughs> You're too young to be my wife, but 
even if I bought you a house and set up a company, there's still plenty of wealth left. This house would sell for a good amount too. I hate to bother you, but I want you to take care of this. Thank you, Grandpa Dan, but my divorce- finalized yet and I need you to stay healthy and with us right please think about it seriously I want Tracy someone like you who doesn't seek anything in return and works hard to stay close to the elderly to use the money I leave behind I want it to be used correctly okay okay I get it <laughs> let's rest for today shall we I felt that grandpa Dan was somewhat in a hurry perhaps he was not feeling well I thought of taking him to the hospital. The next morning, I received several calls from Scott. It kept ringing. I answered around the tenth time. Tracy, what is going on? Ah, welcome back. You finally returned? As you can see, Scott, you don't need two houses, do you? What? You thought I didn't know you weren't really transferred and are living with a young girl? Oh, wait. Just quickly write and submit the divorce papers. I don't want child support if you just leave swiftly, and we can get this over with. You're so easy going. Did you find another man? I realized how unreliable and worthless you are, so I'm working hard to raise our child by myself. I don't have time for unnecessary thoughts. I just want you to disappear. I was wrong. Forgive me for the divorce. Just come back and let's talk. I will never come back, and I won't forgive you. Even after all this pleading? 
I'll break up with her, please. No need to break up. I wish you both happiness. Okay, fine. I'll submit the divorce papers today. Please do. And you should at least apologize properly. Oh, Tracy. I made you feel bad, didn't I? Sorry. Just like when I found out you were married all those years ago. <laughs> Take care of the procedure, son. From there, I quickly started preparing to set up the company. Gathering people, setting up facilities, and getting certifications. Why I rushed. I immediately took Grandpa Dan to the hospital, but he was already in a state where surgery was not possible. And the doctor said he wouldn't live much longer. I wanted Grandpa Dan to see the company I created. Even before the company started operating, we received many reservations and inquiries from users. Just a little more, and then Grandpa Dan collapsed and was taken to the hospital. I hurried. I had to do whatever I could as quickly as possible. Grandpa Dan- visit you. Tracy, you don't need to come to such a place when you're busy. I got permission to go out today. Let's take a little walk. That sounds nice after such a long time. I took Grandpa Dan to the company. I showed him the office design we had thought of together, the staff, uniforms, cars, everything, and we took a photo with all the staff in front of the office. Excuse me, who is this gentleman? Sorry for suddenly intruding. I'm Tracy's father. <laughs> Grandpa Dan winked at me. But that was the last time I saw him smile. Perhaps he had been waiting to see the company completed. That night, he passed away quietly in his hospital bed. I've decided to continue this work, staying close to the elderly for their last moments of joy, just as he told me. This is my way of repaying Grandpa Dan. If not for this encounter, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today. Grandpa Dan, it's my turn to repay you now. At that moment, I promised him and felt more radiant than ever in my life. <laughs>